happy Easter. I hope everyone is having a lovely Sunday. Uh, Charles Barkley recently had a public moment of wisdom on our political climate right now. And I thought it would be fun to watch that and talk about it together. And while I was getting ready to turn the camera on, I saw this on Twitter and wanted to share this with you as well. Uh, so <laughs> I did watch this entire segment and it did go on this way. I encourage you to actually watch it. It's really funny, uh, but I'll just read you sort of the headline. So it says, uh, so this is Jim Acosta and Brian Stelter on CNN and they're having a discussion. And it says CNN's Brian Stelter and Jim Acosta discuss their struggles with post-Trump stress disorder and admit that journalists are having a hard time finding interesting content with Trump no longer in the White House. Uh, this was also on a, a Twitter page called uh, Biden voters posting their L's online. If you want a good laugh, uh, I would follow that page. This is one of them. Um, so yes, they, they were talking about this, having a hard time finding content. No, there is an abundance of content out there. Trust me, the news cycle is out of control. I feel like every five minutes with tons and tons of content and tons of things that you could be talking about, but you kind of put yourself in a rock and a hard place because you've been dishonest for the past four years. And now if you were to be honest about the actual stories out there, you would kind of out yourselves as big old hypocrites maybe. And the one person you could kind of blame everything on and put the fault on is no longer in office. So oops, that stinks. Um, so you're right because all your content was about Trump. So I guess there is nothing interesting now because your, your golden egg has left the building. I often think for a lot of these people, like for CNN and MSNBC, I almost think it would have been like they tried so hard to get Biden elected and I, I actually wonder why because I think it actually would have been a lot better for them if Trump was still in office. I wanted to talk about Charles Barkley. So I'm gonna play you a few seconds of an interview that he gave. I found what he had to say very interesting. So here it is. Shared that news, how painful it was. Yeah, but the one thing I took out of that piece was Man, I think most white people and black people are great people. I really believe that in my heart. But I think our system is set up where our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, are designed to make us not like each other so they can keep their grasp of money and power. They divide and conquer. I truly believe in my heart most white people and black people are awesome people. But we're so stupid following our politicians, whether they are Republicans or Democrats. And their only job is, hey, let's make these people not like each other. We don't live in their neighborhoods. we all got money. Let's make the whites and blacks not like, like each other. Let's make rich people and poor people not like each other. Uh, let's, let's scramble the middle class. I truly believe that in my heart. Do you mean to tell me? Well, that's what we've been talking about for the past year almost is how they do this. For example, uh, a real life example of something that's happening right now, uh, look at what's going on with this uh, voter, this voter bill in Georgia. So they're calling it the voter suppression bill. It's actually called the voter integrity bill and they are using race as a way to push their personal agenda of not getting this bill passed. When in actuality, there is nothing uh, bigoted or racist in the bill. If you look at the things in the bill, these are the most controversial things that they're talking about in the bill. So what the bill actually says is that no water or snacks are being or are going to be allowed to be handed out uh, within 15, 150 feet of the polling place. Now, poll workers can hand out water and snacks, but outside people cannot. And that is a law that's already a law in several other states. It's called electioneering. Uh, people will pass out gifts and things and harass people in line and try to coerce them into voting a certain way. And that's not allowed with a, within 150 feet of a polling place. You can bring your own snacks. Uh, the poll workers can hand out snacks, but outside people cannot. Uh, if they're beyond 150 feet, then they can. And uh, I'll just say this, I had to go to the DMV recently 
and uh, I was there for I think three three and a half hours uh, there was no one there handing out water and snacks I waited in line I was okay I brought my own water my own snacks and I I survived it so uh um Another one is uh, they want to require ID to vote. Now, this is a big one that a lot of people are against, and they're calling this. Uh, they're saying that if you are for uh, presenting your ID to be able to vote, that that means you're for voter suppression. That suppresses minority votes. Uh, but in actuality, the large um, a large number of people actually do want voter ID. I think this is Rasmussen. So 72% of voters across the board, no matter race or political affiliation, uh, want ID to be required if you go and vote. And that's 89% of Republicans, 60% of Democrats, 77% of people not affiliated with, uh, with a political party would like ID to be required to vote. And if you break it down by race, uh, for white, it's 74%. Black, 69%, and other, so that's all other ethnicities, 82%. So there you have it. The majority of people, regardless of race or political affiliation, think that you should have an ID to be able to vote. You need an ID to see an R-rated movie in some instances, to buy cigarettes, to buy alcohol. Uh, and the same people that are pushing this uh, for for no ID required to vote are the same people that are also pushing for a vaccine passport. So those sort of things conflict with each other a little bit and makes you think about the motivation behind this. Um, so another thing that it will outlaw ballot harvesting, which is already against the law in a lot of other states. Ballot harvesting uh, is where a, a person collects a bunch of ballots and then goes and turns it in to a secure polling place for the people they collect the ballots from. Now, the problem with this is there is no check and balance between the location and the and the ballot box. Anything can happen to these ballots along the way. Uh, they can be thrown out, uh, they can be discarded, anything can happen to these ballots. And a lot of people will use this, they'll go to nursing homes and they'll coerce people into voting a certain way and collect all of those ballots and take them to a polling place for them. A lot of people use this as a way to take advantage of vulnerable populations and to get them to vote a certain way. There was actually a woman that recently got arrested for doing this in Texas. She was um, taking advantage of vulnerable populations, coercing them into voting a certain way, and then handing in their ballots for them. So it's against the law already in a lot of places. So I don't see anything. And it also extended early voting hours and made it easier to vote by mail-in or absentee ballot. So there is nothing bad in this bill at all. Yet they are saying that if you are for this bill being passed, that you are in fact the big old giant R word and that this whole bill is voter suppression when in fact it is not. Uh, they even got big corporations behind them like the NLB saying that they're not going to have their all-star games in Atlanta. So that's another big thing. They put race into everything, even things that have absolutely nothing to do with race and that's how they use and push their agenda so that people don't actually have conversations and instead they're just fighting with each other instead of paying attention to what these people are doing behind the scenes. Now not only do you have politicians doing it, you have big corporations doing it and all of these politicians and corporations who come out and virtue signaling well, first of all, it's usually completely empty virtue signaling. And secondly, they usually, through these policies that they push, it usually has the opposite effect and they end up hurting the very group that they claim to be saviors for, that they claim to be pushing for. And again, the virtue signaling is always empty. Take, uh, let's take this whole MLB thing. So uh, they are speaking out against what they are calling is the voter suppression bill in Georgia, the, the bill who we just went through the most controversial things that are in the bill. Uh, so the MLB, they're not, they don't want to hold their all-star game in Atlanta because of this bill, and that's what they're doing. Uh, but the MLB's headquarters are actually in New York State. New York State actually has a a more strict, uh, they have stricter voting laws than anything that's in this bill in Georgia. So by their own standards, we'll see if this was empty virtue signaling or if they're in fact going to move their headquarters out of New York. But even Malcolm X sort of talked about this a tiny bit. Listen to this clip of him. 
there are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. All right, I hope you all enjoyed everything. Let me know what you think about those clips. And again, I hope you're having an awesome uh, Easter, not Thanksgiving. Uh, have a good day. All right, bye.